In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and photograph a highly reflective golf club. Now, working with metal objects that are very reflective, we have its own individual issues. You have to light what the metal sees, not the metal itself. In this case, we're talking about a fairly round item. We're looking at different areas that are going to reflect. So it's like, you have to think of it like playing pool. You've got to look at the angles of, of bouncing off the, uh, in a pool table, getting ready to do a bank shot. It's the same thing with lining. We're banking the lights. We're, we're working with the light at angles that are going to reflect right back into the camera. But at the same time, we've also got to be very careful to control the highlight detail. Again, the difference between just barely bright enough and too bright might just be a half a stop in exposure, but it might ruin the photograph. In this case, I want to make a golf club shot that could be used against a white background or could be dropped out against a darker background. So in either case, I've got to make sure that the white does not exceed the pure 255 white. I've set the golf club up on a Matthew C stand. It's being held with a boom arm in place, pretty good position. And I've roughed in the lights and I've roughed in the camera. Let's go ahead and turn on the live view of the camera and we can see exactly what we're getting. So we'll turn on a remote live viewing on the Canon 1DS Mark III. I've gone to the uh, 90 millimeter tilt shift lens along with the 1.4 teleconverter. The teleconverter then brings our 135 millimeter lens to, excuse me, brings our 90 millimeter lens to a 135. Um, let's uh, need to rotate this guy here and we're looking at it. Let me get the white balance set for us here and we'll do tungsten. Make sure that's not set yet. Tungsten light. And we can see pretty good that we have, you can see the main softbox lit up inside uh, on the top of this club and also you can see where the secondary softbox is. Now I've started out just roughly to kind of get in position. Let's get it sharp first. Now I've got the lens in a straightforward non-tilted non or non-shifted or not position so that we can see the difference. Now you can see as it's in the, uh, that the front of the club is fairly sharp but the uh, shaft of the club is definitely going way out of focus. I think we can do a little better to bring that into a little more sharpness. Now if we wanted to make it more out of focus that's a great thing we can do with the lens but in this case I want to get it sharp. So I'm going to take the lens and I'm going to uh, uh, we can see, first of all, this is with it actually nothing right here. We're going to center the lens. You can see, again, really, really now how far out of focus it is. And as I turn and tilt the lens toward the camera, I'm taking the lens and shifting it towards the camera. So now the lens, the front of the lens element is in the same diagonal position as the club, going away from me to the, to the right. As I pull that in severely, now I can refocus the camera and we can see that there's the front is sharp and now just a little bit turned back. The difference between, it's just a slight twist of the lens between the front and the back to bring all that in, in sharp focus. I'm going to turn a little bit and see how much more I can do. I can bring it right here. You, can't, you can go too far, so you've got to be careful not to go too far. A little bit goes a long way. So I'm thinking right about in here, maybe back up a little bit, see if this is better. So I can see back and forth on my screen. If I wanted to get way out of focus, I could do that, but I'm tilting towards, towards the lens, and that is about as much as I'm going to get right in here. Right there. That's the front of the lens. I'm going to focus a little bit back way through. Now, the first thing I noticed looking at the shot that the chrome doesn't really cover the top, so I'm going to bring the light box right down into the shot to where it's almost actually in the photograph. It can't actually be in the photograph. I've shot many a time, I've shot clubs like this where I'm shooting the club right up against the fabric of the light box. And that's what's the beauty of the controllable lights. I can tweak these lights up one third f-stop all the way down to five watt seconds. So if I needed just a little blip of light, but controllable light, I can always do that. So you need to have lights that you can control. So I'm going to drop this box down a little bit lower into the shot. And we can see already in the live view how the chrome has done a wonderful job of lighting up the top of the, sh the shot. The side box right here, I'm going to bring that in a little closer and, and bring it around the front of the shot a little bit to see how we can see that as I bring that around. We have just a little bit of a blip of line where the two come together. It's very easily retouched. A lot of clients may want a little black reflected in there. Many times I've added black after the fact, but we're getting the sort of the top part of the club 
lit very well, but you can see the front half is very, very dark. I don't have uh, anything here. I could add a white card or I could actually pull that paper up. So let me just try the white card first and see what happens. And as I drop the white card in, we can see automatically right on the screen how much that's doing. I can put that white card literally almost right into the photograph depending on how much, I want to, how much light I want to bring in there. So that's one way of doing it. Another way can be I'm using a four foot white paper behind there and I use a short paper like this for a reason because I want to bring the paper up from below. I left some extra paper down here and now I can bring this paper up from below and sort of reconnect it up in here and literally build myself almost a little bit of a light tent. And I can see as I do that, I can bring that, you can see literally on the camera, I can bring that light up and it's lighting the shaft really well. So I, like, I think I like this a little better. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a clamp, which I've got ready to go, and clamp that in here. Make sure it doesn't, so I don't wanna get it in a spot where you don't see it. And then bring that paper back out and see exactly, now of course I don't want it in the shot, but I could bring this side of the paper up this way. I can cut a hole in the paper. There's a lot of different things I can do. And that's looking pretty good. Only one little spot that I'm missing on there. So I think what we're gonna do is have my car, I wanna see if that little spot is over here. See here and find it. Uh, let me get a smaller card. And it's gonna be probably, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and attach this over here. Just. And I'm looking for one more spot that I can see if I can fill in here. And it looks like it's gonna be right down in here. That's where it is, right here. That's my spot. And I can see if I line that card up there, that one little spot, you can see in and out, in, out. You can see how that's really lining up nicely right there. So I think what I just need to do is get a couple of quick clamps here. And let's set that up. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the light box. And the last part, the last one I'll hold by hand because I'll actually look right through the camera at the time of shooting. So that's giving me a, except for it's in the shot a little bit. We'll pull that out just a little bit in here. That's giving me a really, really nice reflection inside this shot. Let me focus right on the front of this guy. Now I can see right where I can see it better. I can focus a little better. And you know, it's not a perfect club. If you thought by shooting new photography, I do a lot of prototyping, but the prototypes are usually in really bad shape. So you have to be used to product that's been handled by the salespeople. It may be a one of a kind. It may be uh, something that was handmade. Uh, so a lot of times the products are not perfect. So you have to consider what is the product supposed to look like, not what does the product look like. Uh, a lot of times the skill of the photographer is also needed in prototyping and changing the texture of the metal. It's gotta look chrome, it's gotta look very, very reflective. It can't look like it has a matte finish. You can't spray it with dulling spray just to get something to show up. Chrome things have to look chrome and satin has to look satin. So we have to be very, very aware of that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take a basic, before I even start dealing with the cards, let's just take a basic exposure. We'll close down our live view and we're looking now into the uh, into the bridge and the actual dialog box for bringing for the uh, camera utility software that allows us to shoot we're set on a manual exposure we've done a custom white balance to start with so we know we've got a good clean white balance we're shooting at 125th at f22 at 100 iso which is our low iso get the best uh, detail finest grain. Let's just go ahead and just shoot one shot to kind of see if we're in the ballpark here. Might be a little too bright to start with. Actually, it looks pretty good to start with. So let's, uh, let's examine what these numbers are. I can tell, just without even measuring anything, that my top light is probably pretty good, but my side light is definitely a little too hot. I can see that it's a lot brighter. So let's bring that into the bridge by doing a Command R, and we open that up uh, from the bridge into Adobe Camera Raw, and we can take a look at what those numbers are. And right there, you can see I'm reading a 253. That's a little too hot. Um, up here, I'm reading a 230. A two, right in here, 230. Perfect, great white detail in here. I can always bring it up a little brighter, but I can't bring it back. So I'm gonna go to my side light and 
completely separate from the top light, I'm going to start bringing the power down. So I'll click, uh, I'm going to click three pops, uh, three, actually a full stop. Uh, so three clicks on the light is a full stop of light. Let's close that off. And now we'll take a look at a second shot. Take a shot and see if we can see a change in that side light area that we're illuminating here. It's a little too dark, so obviously I went a little too far. So let me go ahead and click that up, one click up. So a lot of times it's not really taking a meter reading, it's taking a look at the image and just making slight lighting adjustments. Um, I realize that the side of the club is not as bright as it, but we can literally process that a lot brighter. My key thing here is that the, the hottest part, the specular part of the light, is within the tolerance that Photoshop will allow me to work with it. The rest of it is easily brought up from middle gray to a brighter gray. So we'll take another shot, see if you like that. I like what's going on with the shaft. I've got some nice tone range in here. That's reading pretty good in here. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I clicked it, made it highlighted. Command R brings me into Adobe Camera Raw. Let me take a look at that number. And we are 231 and, and 190 is on the top. Now it looks to me like I might be able to raise the power on the top a little bit because the top is not as bright. So I've lowered the side light and I will bring this light up just a little bit brighter. Here. And we'll do, we'll take up two thirds of a click up. So we'll be a little more top light coming in. We'll cancel this. And this should pretty much do what we need to. New image coming in. Ah, much, much better. I'm now going to open this one up, Command R. I like this a lot better. It's a little more balanced out. I'm reading 229, 236, 238, 242, and down in here, 227. Perfect. So now what I've got, that top part of that club has got exactly the right amount of detail for the perfect exposure. The rest of it can be brought up. And if I need to take a couple of exposures and paint two together, that's easily done. But with this kind of shot, one exposure is all I need. Now, I do notice that there is one part of the club. It's a, I, could, I could paint that in with Chrome in Photoshop. But if we can do it in the camera, let's do it in the camera. It's always the best place to do that. So let's find my little card. I'm going to see if I can get this by, I'll have to actually look through the camera once. So I'm going to come around here. It's hard to see for you. but. I'm going to come in here and drop this card in. It's one little bad spot right there, and we'll see the shot. And that should do it. This should be the final shot. And there we go. Let's open the two together just to see the difference. I'm going to bring that one, and I'm going to hold my Shift key down, highlight the second one, and then do a Command R, bring both of them up into Adobe Camera Raw, and we can see that the first shot we are missing the reflection down in here. I really like what's going on here. It's very nice. You want to have, when things are round, say the round shaft, you can't just have it flat white. You have to start with a, with a highlight and then have some kind of shadow area. Many times I will make a, my own little, I will path out a section and put it in bright as its own highlight or darken it down as a shadow. So you're trying again to sculpt the light. That's our job is to sculpt that light on something that's very tough to deal with. Because of its roundness and reflection, you're dealing with so many different angles, you have to sort of appease all of them at one time. When we look at the more finished version here, you can see how I really like the actual gradation of the chrome going up. It's got a little stopping point, but I will probably in Photoshop, I might blend that one area together right in here. I might blend that area in just a little bit so it blends. I got a nice line separating against the white background. When that turns white, that's really going to jump out. And then we just do a little cloning or a little healing to take out a few of the uh, built-in smudges that's been handled by the uh, sales teams, as this is probably a, you know, considered, as, considered a one-of-a-kind club. Generally, in product photography, you're working with a one-of-a-kind image, and you're not able to say, just pick from 50 of them and shoot the best one. A lot of times, they're being made. You have the only one-of-a-kind. It is what it is, and it's up to the photographer 
to take the worry out of the client. The client doesn't need to worry about clipping pass and retouching defects. The client wants a finished picture. And these are all billable things, things that you can add to the production. There's photography and there's post-production. And we need to learn how to bill the post-production as a separate item. We have to teach our clients that just because we do everything we can in the camera to get it right doesn't mean it's perfect every time. And we need to be sort of compensated for the time it takes for us to do that extra effort. Being photographer, a lot of times we find ourselves being perfectionists and we take it even farther than what the client wants. In this case, I want to give them something really, really nice that they will be able to, and we sharpen it up, brighten up that front of the club just a little bit, and that thing will jump right off the page.